Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be on angels, the good, the bad, and the ugly. If you... Uh, remember a movie called That by Clint Eastwood, you're probably old, or you've seen the reruns, but never, no matter. Uh, today is April 29, 2020. I saw something interesting while surfing the net. Uh, everybody's talking about the coronavirus. They call it the COVID-19 COVID, C-O-V-I-D, somebody says it stands for Chinese Origin Virus in December 19, COVID-19. I thought, hmm, that's interesting. All right, so enough of that. I'm going to go through angels, angel and angels in all places as it appears in the King James Bible, starting with Genesis until we get to the book of Revelation. Um, the books of the Bible in the King James are not in chronological order. They're close, but uh, some people say that the book of Job is the first book an oldest book in the Bible. I'm kind of of that opinion, too. I see no reason to disagree, but we're going to start in Genesis. And we're going to go to chapter 6. Now, I have an entire playlist on this particular subject. If you're interested, it explains the origins of the Canaanites and specifically why the Lord said absolutely, positively, do not marry into the line of the Canaanites. So, without further ado, let's go to Genesis 6 and verse 1. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God, sons of God, God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they choose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, think Goliath. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord." These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. Look at the first four letters of that word, G-E-N-E, -E, gene, his DNA. He was perfect in his DNA, his genes, his generations. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And trust me, Ham was not kosher. That's a joke, people. Uh, Ham was the father of Canaan. 
Verse 11, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh, all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. All right, so. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Now, I hope you know it. Noah builds the ark. The flood of water comes. The baptism of the earth. Now, there are people that will tell you that the sons of God are the righteous men, and then the daughters of men are the wicked women. And they want you to think that all the men were righteous and all the women were evil. And then they got married, and then giants were born to them. Does that make any sense? Believers and unbelievers get married and they have giants for kids? No. No, it doesn't make any sense. But that's what the demon nominational churches want you to to believe because they want to convince you that the, um, you know, God uh, changed his mind about the Canaanites and the giants, the Philistines, Goliath, and that now they have a chance for salvation. That's what they want you to believe. I mean, God told Israel not to marry into the Canaanites for a reason. And not all the Canaanites were giants. You can read about uh, the sons of Anak, A-N-A-K, or the Philistines. But uh, let's take a look at the sons of God. Now, Jesus Christ is called the only begotten Son of God. Adam was called a Son of God, in Matthew chapter 1, because guess what? God was his father. He didn't have an earthly mother. Some people say, well, you know, Mother Earth. Yeah. But the Bible doesn't say that. So, and believers do not become sons of God until they're born again of or born from above of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit. Jesus told Nicodemus, uh, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I think I'm paraphrasing, but maybe not. It's close enough for government work, right? So, who are the sons of God? Let's have the Bible explain the Bible. Let's go to Job chapter 1, verse 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Hated evil, right? And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep, and three hundred camels, and five hundred yoke of oxen, and five hundred she asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And that people is wealth. Gold, silver, land, cattle. That was wealth in the Bible. Not um, little pieces of green paper with pictures of presidents on it. Matter of fact, on the $20 bill, Andrew Jackson, um, he got rid of the bank, the central bank. <laughs> And they mock him by putting him on the $20 bill. Of course, my European listeners, uh, you got euros. Or you in the UK, you got pounds. Or pence, by the time they take taxes, right? All right, so, verse 4. And his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their heart. Thus did Job continually. I have a feeling that Job's daughters were far more righteous than the sons. 
and that's why he didn't need to offer sacrifices for the daughters. But, but here's the punchline. Verse 6. Now, there was a day when the sons of God... Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and dun, 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 Satan came also among them. So, Satan's tied in with these sons of God. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. Ah. Okay. So, sons of God are tied in with Satan. Now, let's go to Job 38. Verse 1. Now, uh, Job had had a lot of bad things happen to him. He said some things. His companion said some things. But now the Lord's answering Job face to face. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up thine loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. In other words, put your pants on like a man. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding. In other words, where were you when I, cre when I made the earth? Where were you? Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? And stretching a line is it's a carpentry term, something that they do uh, when you take a two boards and you put a nail and then you put the line, stretch a line between the two of them, that, that string's going to be straight. And that's what you build your wall off of. You follow the string because you know that that's going to be straight. So that's a carpentry term. All right, so who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest, or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Is the earth on a foundation fastened? No. Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Now, when you're building a house, the first stone that you lay down is the cornerstone. And if the cornerstone is straight and square, your whole house will be straight and square. And if it's off, the whole house is going to be off. So, um, and Christ is known as the cornerstone of our faith. He's known as the rock. So I just, you know, thought I'd throw that in there. But this isn't about that. But if anybody's interested, I'll, you know, write me a comment and I'll, I'll answer. All right, so God's asking Job, where were you when I made the earth? When I created the earth? Where were you? And the answer is, you weren't around. Alright, so. Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Verse 7. When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. You see, people, in Isaiah 14, I think it is, and I think it's verse 7. Um, the NIV says, deletes the word Lucifer and calls them the morning star. Star. And in Revelation 22, Jesus says, he is the bright morning star. But here we're talking about the morning stars how they sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Why? They were celebrating the creation of the earth. Now, Adam was not created until six days after the earth was created. And if you look up in the Genesis record of chapters 1 and 2, 
day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, doesn't matter. Um, it does not specifically say what day the angels were created. Now, angels obviously exist, but it doesn't tell you what day. Now, some people will say that the, um, I forget the exact term that it uses about the, um, the heavenly bodies or whatever, uh, talking about the stars. Now, that is possible. That is very possible that, you know, it might not be talking about just the stars in the sky. It might be talking about the angels. That's possible. But here it says, The morning stars and the sons of God shouted for joy at the creation of the earth. My opinion is that the angels were created prior to the earth. That's how I see it. You know, so Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. Adam is, was called the Son of God in Matthew 1. And believers don't become sons of God until they're born of the Holy Spirit. So, who are these sons of God? If they existed prior or at the creation of the earth, they have to be angels. They can't be humans because the earth came and then six days later, man was formed, Adam was formed out of the dust of the earth six days after the earth was created. These beings are shouting for joy at the creation of the earth. So, logically, it has to be angels. So, I think I proved the point for most people. And there's some people who will argue everything and anything. But let's skip that and let's go to angels. Oh, and another thing, people, this is why God said, don't marry Canaanites. Don't marry the Hittites. Don't marry the Amorites. Don't marry the Philistines. Stay away from these people. They're human satanic hybrids. And when all is said and done and Christ finally returns in glory, we're going to probably find out that almost every major every leader every major leader in the world is probably one of these satanic hybrids all of them all of them you'll watch mark my words i don't claim to be a prophet but i i i just you know jesus said by their fruits ye shall know them and these monsters fruits are poison all right let's go to angels interesting enough i just had a comment uh the other day on one of my uh, videos that uh, somebody complained that said hagar was not abraham's handmaid or sarah's handmaid he said oh no she was his wife Okay, Genesis chapter 16, verse 1. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, now Sarai, her name was changed to Sarah, and then Abram's name was changed to Abraham. Now Sarah, Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children, and she had an handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife. So, technically... I guess she was. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. So here it is, when Hagar, the Egyptian woman, got pregnant, um, she hated Sarai. And, um, well, 
You know, she's probably like, oh, well, I'm better than you. I don't know. And Sarah said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom, and when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and thee. And Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarah dealt hard, hardly with her, she fled from her face. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to shore. And he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, Sarai's maid, whence comest thou? And whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. Ish means man. Um, and, for example, Brit means covenant. So when you say Brit-ish, British, means covenant man or man of the covenant. So thou shalt call his name Ishmael. Verse, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. Verse 12. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Now, I did an entire Bible study on Ishmael, father of the Arabs. He was, remember, the Lord said he's going to be, he's going to multiply his seed and it's not going to be numbered for multitude. And he says he's going to be a wild man and his hand will be against every man. And I'll, I've had preachers tell, try to tell me, oh, well, this isn't, no, that doesn't apply to, you know, Ishmael's not the father of the Arabs. Well, then who do these promises that God made well, the angel of the Lord made, who do they apply to? Tell me. Of course, they can't answer because most of them are liars or deceivers or deceived. I don't know. So Ishmael would be multiplied to his children. It would not be able to be numbered for multitude. He would live in the presence of the brethren and he would be a wild man, and his hand would be against every man, and every man's hand against him. If that doesn't mean, you know, match the Arabs, I don't know who it does match. Anybody has any ideas? Let me know. I'd be interested. You know, I don't have all the answers, but... All right, so, verse 13. Oh, but if you're interested, I've got an entire uh, video on Ishmael, father of the Arab nations. Uh, let's see. Verse 13. And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God seest me. For she said, Have I also here looked after him that seeth me? Therefore the well was called Beer la Hyrol. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Bered. And Hagar bare Abram a son, and Abram called his name, his son's name, which Hagar bare Ishmael. Now, I'm sure that the angel of the Lord told Hagar what the name was, and she probably said, you know, told Abram that, you know, I met an angel of the Lord, and, and this is what he said to call him. Now, 
Um, I'm not sure I'm going to cover it, but there is um, much evidence that in many cases, sometimes the entity called the angel of the Lord is God himself. Maybe not God the Father. Some Most people will theorize that it is Jesus Christ in his pre-incarnate form. Because the angel of the Lord, for example, when it was uh, at the burning bush with Moses, spoke in the first person. Now, Michael and Gabriel never did that. They never speak in the first person speaking for God. Never. But, but, but sometimes... The, what's called the angel of the Lord does speak in the first person um, as you know saying like I the Lord or something to that nature I will get to it but I'm just bringing it out now in the introduction so that you know what to expect all right and Abram called his son's name which Hagar bear Ishmael and Abram was four score and six years old when Hagar bear Ishmael to Abram so he was 86 when he had this kid. 86. Huh. I just thought of something. Don't uh, restaurants, when they run out of a, a, a food special for the day, let's say roast beef sandwiches, don't they say 86 roast beef sandwiches were out? I don't know. All right, let's read Genesis uh, I guess we're going to do 18 and 19. Genesis 18, verse 1. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. Now these men are angels. We'll find that out next chapter. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord. Now, I believe one of these was the angel of the Lord pre-incarnate Christ. And he said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread, and comfort ye your hearts, after that ye shall pass on. For therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. Now, isn't it interesting? These angels look like humans, you know, wash their feet, uh, some bread, you know. All right. Uh, let's see. Verse 6. And Abram hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abram ran unto the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto a young man, and he haste, hasted to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah there, thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. In other words, she was in menopause. No more periods, no more childbearing. Verse 12, Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I sh of a sure surety bear a child which am old? Verse 14, here's a very good question. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Good question, right? Is anything too hard for the Lord? 
At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. And the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation? And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is their sin is very grievous. I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which has come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men, the men, which are angels, people, and the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Now, I know we just did this not too long ago, but, you know, I'm, I have to assume that, you know, new people haven't listened to this in a previous study. So, so Abraham says, Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy, not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked. And that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? You know, people, think about this. When the wicked people drive out the righteous people out of the cities, those cities are ripe to be destroyed. And it's happened in the past where the evil ones drive out the good people, either by killing them or making their lives in peril so that they're forced to leave to save their lives and their families' lives. So, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Verse 26, And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. And Abram answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Peradventure there shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spoke, spake unto him yet again and said, Peradventure there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. And he said unto him, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak peradventure. There shall be forty. 30 be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. And he said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure, there shall be 20 found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for 20's sake. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. This is the last time, Lord. This is it. That's the Bob translation. Peradventure ten be found there, and he says, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abram, and Abram returned unto his place. Now, how do we know these men are angels? Chapter 19, Genesis, verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, and he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house.
And he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. Now, guys, may, uh, uh, those of you that have uh, the gals in the house that cook, um, to make bread that you know is leavened, it takes longer. You've got to wait for the ri uh, bread to rise. Unleavened bread is easy. You just, you know, water and oil and um, flour, and then you you just bake it, and that's unleavened bread. You can make that really quick. But if you want leavened bread, that you want the bread to rise, you know, the soft bread, that takes longer. So, you know, it uh, that's... Um, you know, if you want if you want to cook something quick for your guests, that's what you make is unleavened bread because it could be done in ten minutes, maybe fifteen. I don't know. And he made them a feast and did break uh, and did bake unleavened bread and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round. Uh, they surrounded the house, both old and young, all the people from every quarter, and they called unto Lot and said unto them unto him. Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. Uh, in a biblical sense, you know, as in Adam knew his wife and she conceived. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they wanted to uh, rape these angels. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him. And he said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. God forbid we offer our virgin daughters to a bunch of sodomites. You know what the Bible says to do with sodomites? It's in the book of Leviticus. And it's it, it doesn't include offering your virgin daughters to them. No. Um, it talks about uh, letting them get stoned. And uh, we're not talking about CBD, weed, marijuana. No. Verse 9. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the door, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. Now, verse 11. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness. The angels struck these wicked, sinful sodomites with blindness. Physical blindness. They're already spiritually blind. Now they're not only spiritually blind, they're physically blind. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides son-in-law and sons and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city? Bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxen great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. Wow. So, remember, uh, Lot and his wife and the two virgin daughters, uh, I guess you could say they left town, they, you know, get out of Dodge. And, uh, you know, the wife looked back, she turned into a pillar of salt. And, um, yeah. So, here it is. The point I'm trying to make is, these angels look like men. They eat. They can wash their feet. And they have power 
to strike men with blindness. Matter of fact, uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, Assyria invaded Israel and an angel, I believe, smote the um, army with blindness and then they led him into Israel and then the uh, prophet said, oh, you know, the, the, the king wanted to kill them all. And the prophet's like, no, no, feed them and send them on their way. See, they showed him mercy. So, so the thing is, these angels, they are, in a sense, the eyes of the Lord. I'm sure the Lord doesn't need angels to tell him Sodom is wicked. But the Bible says, in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall everything be established. And the Lord always seems to follow his own rules, his own laws. All right, in Deuteronomy 19.15, one witness shall not rise up against man for any iniquity or for any sin. In any sin that he sinneth, at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. Um, that's why you have, in the end times, you're going to have Elijah and another witness, the two witnesses, go to Jerusalem to confront the false prophet and the beast. So, that's why there was two angels. So, angels have power. And we're going to cover more of that when we get to the book of Job. I know I just recently did a whole bunch of stuff on the book of Job, but this is another study. And a lot of these subjects interweave with other subjects in the Bible, so there's a lot of overlap. So, all right, well, I think that um, this is a good introduction, and um, I guess this is going to be part one. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. And blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father. And um, may, uh, may the Lord give you understanding in all his ways and his word. And just remember in James 1, he says that if any of you lack understanding... Let him ask of God in faith. So, it's always a good idea to pray for understanding. Yeah, in Jesus' name, amen.